Welcome to the pros and cons of the inflatable hot tub 2023. I would love to review it in the hot tub, but it's steamy as hell. And that's a good thing. Today, we're gonna to talk about the pros and cons of an inflatable hot tub. Now, I know I won't shut up on this, but it's an awesome thing that you can throw in your Airbnb or simply a budget backyard build to elevate your, well, backyard on a budget. I have owned my inflatable hot tub for about two weeks and I've compiled a pretty extensive list of pros and cons. Now, you may have seen the intro and are thinking, Grayson, why don't you do the whole video in the hot tub? And the simple reason is that the hot tub is so hot that it will immediately fog up my lens. So I actually can't really film out there because it's hot and that's a good thing. So today we're gonna talk about the pros and cons of a daggum inflatable hot tub. If you would like some extra hot tub money, stick around for today's sponsor because it's a free online stock brokerage giving out free stocks as a one-time sign-up bonus. So if you want an extra 20, 30 bucks to put down on your hot tub, or that's enough for a net or filters or LED lights, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of little things that you can add on to your hot tub experience to make it exponentially better, especially those LED lights that you're gonna see a lot in today's video. You can find all of the things that I talk about, everything I I recommend in an ordered list of Amazon links and you can just get everything there, no problem. But Webull is going to pay you with six free stocks from their free online stock brokerage. And all you gotta do is click the link in my description, create an account, fund that account with as little as one cent. They're gonna put six free stocks into your brokerage account. You can sell it by the dip, make more money or cash them out and buy well hot tub accessories. Now, first of all, if you've never heard of an inflatable hot tub, yes, they do exist and no, they do not suck depending on who you ask. I absolutely love mine. If you're coming from my hot tub review, you know that I gave it an 11 out of 10 because you know the price to enjoyment is exponential. There's people who will spend eight grand on a hot tub and love it just as much as I love my $400 hot tub. So I really wanna focus this video on the cons because everybody really likes the hot tub. Everybody on YouTube loves it. I've seen tons of content on it and everybody loves it so much they don't even think or care about the negatives behind it. But I think I think it's extremely important for the consumer to be completely aware of all of the drawbacks before they're sold a hot tub. So we are gonna start with the pros. Now, the first pro is that it's semi-portable. You can set it up out of the box in one hour and it takes about one to two days, depending on your climate, uh, to heat it up. So it's literally, you can just drain it in a second, 30 minutes to fill it back up, and then in a day or two, it could be even 12 hours and you're up to 104 degrees and you can hop in. So if you're staying somewhere for you know two weeks, it's worth draining your hot tub, bringing it with you if you have room and setting it up. It doesn't take much maintenance or effort. So if you're a renter and not a homeowner, you can get this portable hot tub, set it up and you're not fixing it to anything. You're not running any plumbing or anything crazy. You can just literally plug it into a wall outlet and you're done. The second pro is it's exceptionally cheaper to buy and maintain than a standard quote unquote brick and mortar hot tub, the traditional kind. It's so much cheaper. So let's say someone has a $20,000 hot tub and it fits 12 people. They're gonna really love their hot tub. But someone like me who has a $400 four person hot tub that is not even comparable, I probably love my hot tub almost as much as that because at the end of the day, how do you feel? I feel great in my hot tub. The floor is completely padded, so I'm comfortable. The back is totally aired up, so it's just super comfy, hot as hell, and the jets are pretty powerful. So the return on your investment when it comes to happiness is exponentially higher than spending a bunch. You know, if I spent 15 grand on a hot tub, I would go to bed every single night thinking I just spent a car on a hot tub when I could have gotten a $400 hot tub that's gonna last me almost as long because these things last a while. They're really, really hard to pop. If they could pop, no one would like them. The third pro is it's extremely easy to run. I put one to two one inch chlorine tablets in per week and maybe a filter per week. And that's more than some other people do. So the energy cost, I don't have an exact bill on it yet, but I've heard people say it's anywhere from 
$10 a month at the lowest if you're in a region that keeps it warmer and it doesn't have to heat it as much. And it could be, uh, the most I've heard is like 30 bucks. And the chemicals is like another 20 bucks a month, including filters and everything else you need. So the maintenance is super low and super easy. I enjoy fiddling around with my hot tub. I am actually kind of upset at how easy it is to work on. My water is always clear, there's no crap in it, and it's always hot. It's kind of boring. I enjoy tinkering around with stuff, and I would love for, well, I, I shouldn't say I would love for my hot tub to mess up. Knock on wood there. Uh, but it's cheap to run and extremely low maintenance, so that's kind of two in one. The fourth pro is it's really comfortable. The I know it doesn't seem like it because there's no real seats in it like a regular hot tub. But you gotta think about most hot tubs have hard shell backs and hard shell seats. When you're sitting in that hot tub, not only can you completely lay down, it's a different experience. It's more like a lounging experience where the water comes up to your chin instead of just stuck, kind of stuck under your titties. So it's a really, really comfortable, because it's all inflated and the bottom's memory foam. So it's, you just stretch out and it's so good because you're fully submerged like a bathtub and you don't get that with most hot tubs because you're sitting upright, right? So you can really, it's hard not to sleep in there. And the last pro is it's simply perfect for rental properties, apartment complexes with large outdoor spaces and reinforced decks. We've already kind of talked about that, but hey, it's really good if you rent. Now let's talk about the cons. And the first one is it's not very good at low temperatures. If it's gonna be consistently below freezing, you're gonna have trouble keeping it up to temperature. And even when you can keep it up to temperature, you gotta remember how the jets work. The jets essentially suck in outside air and throw them through the 140 jets I've got in the bottom of my tub. I call them more bubbles. It feels like a real hot tub jet that's about six inches away, which still feels really good, but you're not gonna get the massaging kind of like uh, how the jacuzzi does in the, uh, with the bathtub. So the performance is not super great in low temperatures because well, it sucks in the outside air and it puts in cold air mixed with hot water, right? So it's not exactly ideal for that. Now there are things that you can do. You can buy cheap little things that you can build like gazebos around it. And they've got actually extra like $20 cover that kind of, they're more of an extreme weather cover. Uh, so you can definitely combat that, but I don't live in a climate region like that. So I don't have any troubles with my hot tub. And if you really want to do it on a budget, you can just get a tarp that you have and drape the tarp over the outside of the cover and then ratchet strap it. And you've got an extra layer of insulation DIY at home. This is a pretty easy problem to overcome. Another con is that the shape of mine, the square one, I think the circle ones are a lot better about this. Uh, but when there's a mass amount of of rainwater, it can't drain off of the cover fast enough. So essentially what happened is we got an extreme weather hailstorm, massive flooding coming through. And it was so much that it put so much pressure on the corner of the hot tub. It loosened the straps, let the rainwater in, and that was a nightmare. Well, not really. We just kind of opened the cover, cover, get it off. And it's totally fine in heavy rainstorms, but this was an exceptionally extreme weather. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with how it looked the next day. Literally, probably eight hours later, I go to bed, I come back out around 2 p.m. and I hop in the hot tub and it's crystal clear. It's hot as hell. Even being flooded with all the rainwater and all the crap that the rainwater collected on top of the dirty cover. It was fixed. It's such a little amount of water that it's pretty easy to keep clean. And again, having that extra tarp with the ratchet strap with a little air pocket, that's gonna help kind of run the water off and you should never have that problems if you have extreme rainfall. But I not even worried, I didn't even get another cover for it because well, it's probably not gonna happen more than once every other year. Another con is the availability of the square hot tub. Most people have the circle one, but I really like the square one because well, I'll draw you a picture. So here is my hot tub. Now it has of course softer edges, uh, but this is I think the outgoing model, the older model, therefore they're harder to find and a little bit more expensive. And here is why I prefer it over the circle because when you have a circle inside that square, you're losing about 10 to 15% of the space and those pockets are perfect for full grown adults to sit back and have plenty of leg room. So the availability of the square one and the availability of square covers, forget about it. I thought I accidentally popped my cover, but I just didn't air it up enough and I was looking for it. And the only cover I found for the square one, this isn't a problem for the circle one, but for the square one was $150 and it wasn't used, but it was opened up and unpacked 
packaged. $150 just for the bladder to replace it. Luckily, it didn't actually pop. And it comes with tons of extra little patching equipment, which is super nice. But I'm not worried about anything popping, surprisingly. I was at first. So we had four people. Uh, I'm about 6'1", and we had four adults, including myself, in the hot tub. And it was a little bit cramped. If you get the square one I have, it's advertised for about four to six people. Well, that would be four smaller adults and two children, or comfortably six children, or fairly comfortably four full-grown adults if you know each other pretty well. So please don't think that you're gonna get six of your best friends in there because, well, you're just not, I mean, you might, but I don't like to touch anybody in the hot tub. So it's possible and we do it all the time and it's a lot of fun, but it's not going to be, of course, as roomy as a bigger hot tub. But it can kind of go as a pro, a pro because I didn't think that it would even be able to get four adults, but it did. Another thing is that the longer you run the hot tub and it sucks in more of the air outside if it's not hot, you will lose temperature. So here's what happens to me on average. I'll hop in the hot tub once it's at 104 and I'll turn on the jets and almost within 60 seconds, it immediately sucks all that cold air in and lowers the temperature to 102. It'll sit around 102 for quite a while. I would say about 30 minutes. And then once it hits 30 minutes, it'll drop to about 100. It seems to drop in intervals of two, which is strange. So it drops to 100. And then if I stay in there for about an hour or more, then we're getting into the 90. 99, 98 territory if it's pretty cold outside. So for example, the other night, we were all hot tubbing for about an hour and a half and there was an extreme cold front blowing in. So it was just pouring cold water into my pump. It was sucking in that, or cold air. It was sucking in large amounts of ice cold air and it basically cooled it down to 93 and it was miserable after about an hour and a half. So there are situations where if you think that you're gonna hot tub in a snowstorm, I wouldn't advise against it. It's not meant for that, unfortunately. And finally, it advertises 140 jets or 100 jets or whatever model you've got. They're all basically the same. They're all best way machines. I have a Coleman with a best way pump. Uh, but the jets aren't really jets. The way I explained it earlier was like a real hot tub jet on medium setting, it feels about six inches away. It feels good. You're moving, you're jiggling. It feels great, but it's not going to kind of, you know, get knots out of your back. It'll jiggle your titties a bit, but that's about it. I find them to be a perfect, comfortable balance. And keep in mind, they're around 100% of the entire hot tub. So everybody gets an even fair share of jets. Anyway, guys, that's my pros and cons of the inflatable hot tub. You can pick everything I own and recommend up in the description below and help ease that cost with some free Weeble money. I will see you guys in the next real estate video. This is probably my last hot tub video and I will see you guys in the next one.